first time in 195 days, a football game kicks off at Trooper Stadium. And we are excited as ever because not only is football back, but my friend who sits right next to me is back commentating once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Eastwood Performance and Athletics YouTube channel. Sebastian Perez Navarro alongside with Christian Salazar. Christian, let's just get it out of the way first. How do you feel that football is officially back and in full swing? You know, I feel excited, but it's not also about me. It's about everybody who's came out here, students. Fans, parents, coaches, administration, administration, sorry, everybody's excited to be, especially the players, I'm sure. We just saw a little bit of trickery. Asterian Diaz airs it out and it's almost intercepted. But first he handed it off to Evan Minjadis and then he went back with it. And almost with the interception was Isaiah Cerceres. You know, that's an interception you have to make. Coaches are going to see that. They're going to recognize that, hey, this guy needs to be able to grab these interceptions easily. Big mistake by him, but hopefully he could bounce back from it and not let it get to his mind. A little bit of a of a nice start, Christian, we could say, of an energetic start. You have Darian Diaz taking the first snap, the junior, and he handed it off to Evan Minhadis. Evan Minhadis tossed it right back. The deep pass, sadly, didn't go for much, but we could have started with fireworks. A little short, almost a screen pass. Slip to tackle, going close to the 35-yard line, but Roman Raguana goes down just short of the first down, brings down third down and medium. You know, Sebastian, I'm looking for a lot of these deep passes, you know. They're trying to show off their arms. Defense is trying to show out too, show that they could get interceptions, get turnovers for their team easily. Handed off Max Mancia, the incoming senior, fighting for more yardage. See if he got it. The marker changes, and so do the change. It's the first first down of the game. The previous pass to... Ramon Laguana Christian, he's looking to prove himself this year. Now, obviously, you have a lot of losses. One of them, Curtis Murillo, as that one almost intercepted off the tip. But let's go back to Roman Laguana. He had 23 total yards. He didn't see much action when it came to varsity. But now with the absences, is that hole going to open up for Laguana to prove himself how dominant he can be as a receiver? You know, definitely, Sebastian. A lot of people that the Troopers lost, Curtis Murillo, Jace Molden, Nate Gomez, Michael Cardera, a lot of people lost, but... The incoming seniors are kind of try to prove themselves, and even the sophomore and juniors too. We know that Laguana has speed, Christian, because he qualified for the 6A track regional meet just a couple of months ago when track swing was in full swing. Now the handoff to Max Mancia goes for a loss of yardage, sets down third down and 12. And really quick, going back to Ram Ramon Laguana, it's going to show to other teams that, hey, that's a speed there. It's a vertical threat. We have to play deep field when it comes to him. Movement at the line. Flag flies. I mean, Hattis going deep. Oh, into the open field. It is incomplete. Flag flies. There was movement at the line. However, we couldn't tell whether that was a jump by Jonathan Hernandez or maybe just a false start. Official on the defense will not make it a first down, but will make it a third down and manageable for the goal team. Third and seven. Minjares alone in the pocket. Three to the right, two to the left. Mancia is open. Mancia, he's going to take it deep downfield. Trips up on the way to the 30-yard line, but not before a big downfield play towards the outside of the field. Gains them big yardage and a huge first down. That was an amazing catch by Mancia. He's a dual threat type of running back. He could run, find open gaps, and just push through the line. Or he could be a receiving running back and do even better there. Gold goes fast, airs it outside of the field. The pass is intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone. He's going to try to return it. Down to the 10, moving, and he's going to go out of bounds. The big play intercepted by the blue team. Turns the ball over early. And Christian, a little bit of a sign that we won't see deja vu because you were here last year. Gold absolutely dominated. They did, Sebastian. You know, hopefully it could be a closer game. Coaches can see more of the players trying to do more for their teams, but we'll see here. The blue team is going to take full control of the ball. First and 10, they'll be spotted around the 18-yard line. Takes a snap, handing off, will not go for much. The starting quarterback 
for the Eastwood Blue team is Ethan Camacho, who handed it off down to Nathaniel Chavira. Which, Christian, let's focus a little bit on Nathaniel Chavira, because while last year I got the opportunity to do the PAs for the freshman team, and let me tell you, Christian, Nathaniel Chavira was a beast. He was going absolutely insane, running for touchdowns all the way from the other ends of the end zones in almost a snap of a fingers. What do you expect from the young man today trying to prove himself as he moves from a freshman all the way to a sophomore? You know, I expect him to ball out, show the coaches what he's capable of, trying to wait for a varsity spot, even though he's only coming in as a sophomore, he's going to really have to work hard for his spot on varsity. Third down and six. It's third down and six early on for the JV offense. Ethan Camacho takes it, fakes it, looking, pumping, throwing, lost it and no good. The pass was intended for Matthew Yarbrough, but it just didn't get their fourth down and six. Christian, in this type of situations, where you want to see what you have out of your athletes, do you go for these fourth down situations? You know, I say you do. There's nothing to lose. It's your own team against your own team. You have to trust your team too, and I'm sure the coaches want to see those fourth down plays, what they're going to do in those situations when it comes to the real game time. Camacho checking in with his coach. The coaches for the blue team go as listed. Adam Duran, Jesus Martes, Michael Molinar, Alex Hernandez, Ryan Alvarez, and Mateo Macias. And the punting unit will come out. Something interesting to know, Christian, is that the kicker for both teams is Diego Rivera, also known as one of the big baseball players that have helped the Eastwood Trooper baseball team make it to the playoffs this season. Now, he takes on a role as a kicker. That just has me curious. How difficult does the transition from a sport like baseball have to be to football where you're not throwing anymore, you're kicking it? You know, I'm sure it's very different, but I'm sure he's going to do an amazing job as a kicker. You know, baseball, it's a slower pace, more mind-inducing game. Football, it's a lot more fast action and you have more adrenaline as you're playing. It would also be injustice to mention Diego Rivera's song when he comes out the walkout for his baseball theme now i'm not gonna sing it but if you've been to an eastwood trooper baseball game you can probably hear it christian we just had the pa guy sing it right now with us getting us dancing grooving and ready to go darian diaz at qb hands it off right down the middle making the cut towards the outside early first down for the gold team Jaden martinez with the moves Jaden martinez with the groove Darian Diaz, it looks like he'll be carrying the drive for this one. You want to see that balance between quarterbacks, Christian, because these two, while Evan Minhadis had a stellar year, Darian Diaz, we can't forget about him. He came in versus Coronado, and he was able to finish the job as the Eastwood Troopers would go on to win that game 49-14. to And also to mention, he has an undesirable love for the sport of football, and he loves every single practice and every single game, no matter how it goes. Screen pass, a little bit off. That one tipped in! Claiming it's a pick. Check the call, no official one. Turnover on the blue team takes advantage. Rudy Bautista with the early pick, and now it's two back-to-back -back interceptions for the Eastwood gold team, Christian. You know, the first drive for the trooper gold team. Sorry, it's going to be a good, bit confusing for the viewers. We'll try to keep it. Uh, very clear, but for the Troopers on gold, you know, they had the first drive intercepted. They almost got a touchdown really close, but back-to-back -back turnovers, you definitely don't want to see that. I'm sure the coaches are not going to be happy about that at all. Coming off the previous turnover, the blue team could not convert. But now Ethan Camacho in better field position as he's close to the 45, sitting right at the 46. They've got better field position, Christian. Let's see if they can make something out of it. Camacho takes a snap, looking, firing up, deep downfield. The pass is incomplete and a lot of physicality, but no flag thrown. You know, Sebastian, another thing I'm hoping to see is I'm hoping to not see a lot of flags. I'm kind of hoping the refs just let them play it out, get that real in-game experience, and just let them see how they handle it. Nathaniel Chavira to the right of Camacho. Tosses it. Chavira makes a move. Past the 40. Going 35. Close to the 30-yard line and enough for the first down for the blue team. 
And just for the viewers at home watching, for the goal team, it's the varsity offense and JV defense. And for the blue team, it is the varsity defense and JV offense. Christian, for players such as Nathaniel Chivira, who found much success when it came to the freshman scene, now they're transitioning over to junior varsity, which is a mix of both juniors and sophomores. So how hard is that transition is going to be as that pass aired out by, Ch by Camacho falls just a little bit too much of his intended receiver? But how hard is it to transition from going to freshman to junior varsity? You know, it's definitely a big transition. You have more competition. The people you're going to be playing against are going to be bigger, they're going to be stronger, but you just have to find your way through and just do the best as you can. The pass by the blue team was intended for Andrew Mesa. It fell way beyond his head, and now the blue team encounters another play. Markers say first down and 10 because of the penalty. It'll set them in front. So while they didn't get as much as they wanted, they do get a little bit of a break due to the penalty. The official spot will move them to the 25. Chavira remains his back. Two to the right, two to the left. Loses the snap, loses the ball, trying to get back on it. He can't, but finally wills his way to get back on the ball. But a big loss, especially after the penalty, Christian. You know, he definitely read Sebastian. However, that was a smart play, just falling on the ball instead of trying to pick it up and throw it away. You risk getting sacked or you risk an even bigger turnover. It's still only second down. They have two more downs to try to get the first down, and if not, they could go for it on fourth, which I think they should, considering their field position right now and the two interceptions they already got. From the 24 all the way to the 38, airs it out deep downfield. The ball is incomplete. Intended again for Matthew Yarbrough. And again, just over his head, Ethan Camacho keeps on overshooting. But this is what these practices are for, Christian. You know, you're right, Sebastian. Coaches want to see, especially see on the field, you have Coach Lopez. He want, I'm sure he wants to see what his players see and what's going on through their head and asking them questions and trying to help them out to the best of his ability. Third and very long, third and 24, we can call it. Under five minutes and 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. Trying to get them to draw off sides to make it third and a little bit more manageable. Movement at the line, did it work? We'll check, multiple flags fly and Camacho can't even get a pass off. Gold is claiming a false start. Blue, however, is claiming an offsides or a neutral zone infraction. We'll check the official call and see what the refs decide. False start goes against the blue. Another detriment. Their past two possessions, Christian, have been off of turnovers. But the first one, obviously, they couldn't get a first down. The second one, however, they're going back and back and back. They're losing it on penalties. Camacho takes it on third and 29, loading up, going up deep, deep downfield, incomplete once again. You know, on another overthrown pass to a receiver. Then again, the receiver was in double coverage. It would have been hard to get that pass off. However, he's got to try to give his re receivers the best chance to catch the balls. It'll be fourth down and 29, and there won't be a, que a question about it. The blue team will metaphorically punt and the gold team will have possession. Earlier on, Christian, we talked about how this was the first game in 195 days, football-wise, that has kicked off at Trooper Stadium. That last game that happened was on Veterans Day, November 11th. A very happy day for the Eastwood Troopers as they would claim a bi-district championship victory against San Angelo, winning that game 61-49. to Overall, the Troopers saw much success, adding to their golden ball collection and making it two consecutive times to the area championship. Just how big is an accomplishment like that to a program that is looking to grow and expand into potential future state champions? You know, it's a huge accomplishment. It shows teams and schools and other cities around Texas that, hey, this team can really do something. 
And another thing to note that the Troopers last year were undefeated on all of their home games. Evan Minhanis is back in at quarterback, handing it right down the middle to Max Mancia. Not going to gain much. The varsity defense is holding their own. As we discuss the growing programs, Christian, it would be good to mention of some Eastwood alumni. And there's currently one Eastwood alumni that has been so far doing great, would be an understatement, in the baseball sector. As Christian Castaneda, former quarterback of the 2018-2019 season, he has been on fire for his college baseball team, Pueblo. As let's go back to May 12th, where his performance with this, and I'm not lying and I'm not bringing up MLB The Show stats, he went 5 for 6, six, ru six runs batted in, 3 home runs, a double, and a single. He has been absolutely going insane, and his highlights have been smothering all over social media. Man in motion, that's Fabian Penosa. I mean, how is going to take it himself? We saw a lot of this during the regular season. Turns on the wheels again, making a move, still staying strong. Past the 40, going to the 30. Minhadis is gone! Somebody say Eastwood touchdown! You know, and that's definitely the play the Trooper goal team needed to get their spirits lifted again. Not another turnover, about a 90-yard run by Minhades, escapes tackles, and just continues all the way for the touchdown for goal team and it gives them the lead 6 up. It feels good to call another touchdown again, but Evan Minhades did it with his legs, Christian, and that was a huge part of last season as he had 1,075 rush yards and 13 rushing touchdowns. That is absolutely phenomenal for a quarterback. Had a, had a stellar season last year, and some of his accomplishments were this. He was the 1-6-A offensive MVP. He ranked 18th in total yards for Texas with 3,824. 3, he was first team all district, but probably the most important one for his future, Christian, is he received a offer from a Division I school. That school in question being the Austin PA Governors. So, even though it's a game of school between school, Christian, how important is it for Evan Minhadis to continue to impress every snap that he takes as a starting quarterback? You know, it's going to show other teams what he's capable of. They saw what he did last year, and they're having even higher expectations for this next upcoming season, for his senior year, and see what he could do with that. Gold strikes first, they went for two. That pass came up incomplete in the attempt. No good. Gold leads 6 nothing. The blue will try to respond back. Christian, you brought up the fact that it's junior varsity offense versus junior varsity defense and varsity offense versus varsity defense. Since they're both on the same team, how are they taking it on at each other? Are they playing rough and tough or are they taking it a little bit easier? I'm sure it's somewhere in the middle, you know, you don't want to play too rough, risk injuries for this next upcoming season, but at the same time, you don't want to play light and just let them get points out of you, because then it's not going to look good for you, but it's also not going to look good for the coaches. The gold defense is coming back on the field, blue offense. Since these are the young studs, we could call them, it would be good to bring up the fact that as we reach the end of the school year, many athletic programs here at Eastwood have been branching out to Eastwood Middle School and Eastwood Knowles about speaking to their programs to incoming freshmen. So as a freshman sitting there, or a future freshman Christian, how do you have to be feeling? Are you a little bit intimidated by the coaches, or are you just excited to start a new chapter? You know, again, I think it's a bit of both. You want to get excited, go out, play high school football. Most kids love to play that. It's a sport they played growing up, and they want to experience that. However, it's going to be intimidating at the same time. You're going to have a lot of competition trying to save your spot on the roster.
this game having big time implications for roster spots as it shows the coaches who deserves one position and Chavira says give me that starting job because he's past the 40 and going close to the 35 yard line big first down and a big play for the blue team trying to tie it up you know I think that's going to be a big impact for the trooper blue team as we saw the overthrown passes I'm sure they're going to ride a bit more on number 34 Nathaniel Chavira and they're just going to try to implement him more for their offense. Eastwood last year, they played and leaned heavy towards the running game. They look to do it again. Hand it off to Chavira. This run attempt, not as successful. At the most, he probably got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a little bit of a loss of a down, but they'll stick the second down marker exactly where it was before. Taking it, lofting it, screen pass complete, making a move, can he get past him? No, he cannot. Jaden James tried to go with the trickery, but couldn't complete it. Screen pass towards the outside. Unsuccessful attempt, we could call it at the most. He gained two, brings up third and ten. And a nice tackle by number 16, Eric Arsenaga, to stop further movement. Third and ten for the blue. Their past two possessions have been very unsuccessful to say the least. Camacho takes a snap. Loading up to the outside of the field. Does it have enough? Your bro is good in the end zone. Somebody say Eastwood Blue touchdown. We're all tied. You know, that's definitely going to put a bit more pressure on the goal team. They got their first score off the touchdown run by Minjades, and now the blue team has already come back and tied it up, and now it's just back to 0-0 zero, zero again. Now, the gold was unsuccessful in their second point attempt. We'll see how the blue can do. Whether they elect to go for two or whether they elect to kick it. Here comes Diego Rivera. The blue wants that lead. The blue want those points. Christian, would, would this be a good time to ask you to sing a song? Diego Rivera, Diego Rivera, Diego Rivera. You know, and you wonder if it's a tie game and it comes to the fourth quarter. You think he'll sell a field goal kick for a team? Depends who he likes more, Christian. <laughs> which team's got more friends? Or which team is willing to buy him lunch? Kick is up. The kick is ruled good. Just like that, Blue take the lead. Christian, what the 50-50 sides when it comes to lead makes me think of is whoever wins this game, what are the practices going to be like? You know, maybe they might have the day off from Coach Lopez, but I'm sure he's going to keep grinding them, keep their gears going, make sure they're ready for this upcoming season. As we continue on, we can see the stadium is getting more and more jam-packed. That includes the student section all dressed up in their summer attire, ready for the party. You know, definitely not the same crowd environment as the home games during the season, but however, this is still something good to see as it shows. Even though this is just a spring scrimmage game, it shows parents are willing to come out and even students too. I'm glad that you mentioned the parents, Christian, because tomorrow it's their opportunity to compete as the Eastwood Football Booster Club is hosting their sixth annual golf tournament. That is taking place tomorrow. So we see the parents constantly hyping up their kids. Now it's their opportunity to show their competitive edge and show their skill. Back is the varsity blue and gold. Offense versus defense, Darian Diaz takes back control of the offense. His counterpart, Evan Minjades, coming off a spectacular run. If you're barely joining us, Sebastian Perez Navarro alongside Christian Salazar, we're watching spring football and we're having so much fun. Two to the right, two to the left, hands it up, right down the middle, making a move, making a juke past the 30. He's going to go close to the 35-yard line. A great run by Jaden Martinez. You know, incredible job by Jaden Martinez to escape the tackles and get the first down for the goal team. First and ten. First 
Diaz, low snap, looking towards the outside. He's going to air it out deep. It is caught. A great catch to be able now moving to the inside of the field, being tripped up, but still able to retain possession. A great catch and a great yards after reception by Alex Sanchez. You know, good job to recognize the ball, where it's going to be placed. He had to stop his tracks and catch the ball, and he was doing a good job at bringing it in. Alex Sanchez Christian, he's going to be an incoming junior. Last year's sophomore, he was on the varsity team. He had 16 total yards, and we mostly saw him on special teams. But how much does it mean for an underclassman to be and have a spot on the varsity team as that pass over the middle is good and complete and gets the gold even farther to taking the lead? You know, it's a good job by Darren Diaz to get the low snap, get it off in time, and avoid the sack. Darian Diaz does not like the fact that he's down by one with a little over two minutes to go in the first. Takes the snap, hands it up, down the middle. Jaden Martinez. Martinez is gone! Somebody say gold touchdown! And just like that, the Trooper Gold team is on top again. Up 12-7 now. We'll see if they go for two, try to make it an even seven-point game, or if they just go for one. This is not deja vu, Christian, because what we've seen is a very back-and-forth competitive game early on in the first quarter, unlike last year, where the goal dominated. Now, hopefully I didn't just jinx this, Christian, because we've been seeing some good competitive football at these two teams. Even though it's spring ball, they have a desire and a want to win. Darian Diaz stands alone in the pocket. Man in motion. That's Martinez rolling out. Will he run? Airs it out. Martinez has got it in the end zone. No! Could not hold on. Good deflection by number 26, William Edens, to break up the pass and prevent the Troopers from getting an even greater score. The gold is able to hold their own, able to add on six more points. However, the two-point conversion for the second time in a row is no good. Christian, should they start thinking about sending Diego Rivera out there to kick some field goals? You know, I don't think that's the case, Sebastian. I'm sure the coaches want to see what these kids are capable of. Diego Rivera is obviously filling in the void left by senior kicker Jesus Garcia, who, by the way, is committed to the Lakeland Muskies and will continue to play football after his high school career. Now, something that we get to see is a little bit of a bond because Diego Rivera comes from baseball and the head coach of baseball, Ruben Munoz, who's also an assistant football coach. The kick taken in by the blue. We'll see Ethan Chamaco once again, see how they can respond after the touchdown by the gold. We'll have under two minutes to play. A little bit of a running back change as Braden Chanowski will now come in. Little brother to Jake Chanowski. Run up the gut. They'll send it now going towards the outside past the 30 and diving a little bit of an ugly hit. However, Joseph Cox is showing his toughness. Student section is in full swing, Christian, and we have to be feeling the nostalgia as they're chanting chants like, oh yeah. And with the minute 30 left in the first quarter, you wonder if the Trooper Blue team will try to march down really fast or just wait to the second quarter to get their points. 
They'll hand it off, up the gut, making a move, past the 40, past midfield, is he gone? Is he gone, Christian? Past the 30, they're catching up to him, but a big play to get them inside of the red zone for the blue team. Arturo Soriano came up big, big run for the blue. The little brother to Jake Chanowski, Braden Chanowski, showing his roots. Obviously, Jake Chanowski, also a senior, leaving us this year, but his legacy bear, being carried on through his little brother. Joseph Cox takes the snap, tosses it, Chanowski loses it, gains it right back, acting like if nothing happened, and that's the calmness you want to see out of these players, Christian. But it's a little bit surprising to see it out of players that are so young, which just goes to show they're naturals. You know, like you said, Sebastian, it is important to stay calm under pressure. You know, he was able to pick up that ball really nice and just keep the play alive for the trooper, for the blue team trooper, sorry. Jake Chanowski. Joseph Cox takes a snap. Rolling out, being under pressure, targeted, and he's going to go down for the sack. The gold team comes up big, junior varsity defense. They had the big run, Sebastian, about a 50-yard gain, and now they're already third and long. You wonder what they're going to do from here on out. The clock will roll and tick down under 10 seconds now officially. Third down and 20. Doesn't look like the blue will get a playoff. Yes, they will. Count me as a doubter. Chanowski going down. Not much gain there. It'll set up fourth down and long. And we'll await the decision at the top of the second quarter. The gold leading 12-7. to Sebastian Pez Navarro alongside Christian Salazar. Christian, in order to have a game like this, it requires much prep, preparation, and workouts. And so do sports like basketball. And summer workouts and conditioning for the boys' basketball will be taking place from June 12th to July 20th. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 12 noon. They'll be having weights from 12.15 p.m. to 12.45 p.m. And finally, skill development from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. in an open gym. A little bit of a pause, Christian, as we start the second quarter. What have you been seeing from both teams and who have been your standouts? You know, we saw the Trooper Gold team. They had two turnovers. However, the blue team didn't really do much on it as... They're down by six right now, but they're looking to bounce back from that, get the get, gain the lead right here as they're in scoring position. However, it's third and long. But so far, standout, I mean, did we really expect the Evan Minhadas with that 90-yard run to get the goal team their first score and to, con to continue hyping up his team? Christian, Evan Minhadas last season was phenomenal as we stated but let's read the full list it was his first season as a varsity starter you think he'd be a little bit nervous right wrong because he had 27 49 pass yards that's 2749 he had 1075 rush yards 35 passing touchdowns and 13 rushing touchdowns christian that's like if i start a franchise in madden and started going crazy with my quarterback <laughs> and that's exactly what he's doing sebastian he's going crazy and he's showing the teams and everybody around him that He's doing ama He's going to do amazing things. And at the same time, he's been hitting the weights, Christian. I've walked past the hallway, and he's huge, Christian. I think he's put on around 15 pounds of lean muscle by himself, so he's coming back stronger than ever, which means how is his resistance in the pocket going to hold up? It's going to show that he's going to be able to escape sacks easier. He's going to be a bigger body, tougher to get down. And what's incredible, too, is his speed and his ability to escape the pocket at that, too. Fourth and 18 for the blue team. Joseph Cox remains at quarterback. Braden Chanowski remains at running back. These young athletes are going to be asked much of during their time as a trooper. It starts now as they are expected to convert a fourth and 18 movement at the line. They do not call it. They will let it play. Man in motion. Cox takes the snap. Looking with time, airs it out, screen pass, hits the ground, and incomplete. It was a low throw, it was a wide open receiver, that's something you have to get off as a quarterback. 
Christian, just how risky are those types of plays? It's fourth and long or third and long even. You're trying to convert. You go for the screen. How confident do you have to be in your blockers that they'll be able to find the open gaps of the people coming in and stop them to able to free up the running back? You definitely have to trust your blockers. However, it's more trusting yourself to believe in them. But you also have to find the hole and find the route you want to take to get the first down. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to do that. We'll see Evan Minhadis alongside Max Mancia. Takes a snap, tosses it down to Mancia. Mancia finding an open lane. Mancia past the 30, making a move, trying to get to the 40. He stopped Max just Mancia, short. Mancia. Mancia last year, he had a also a highlighting season that he made a name for himself. 690 rush yards, 366 receiving yards, and 12 total touchdowns. And he looks to follow up that success even more as he comes into his senior year. You know right here, Sebastian, I want to see a deep throw by Minhadis. Let's see if you get what you wish for, Christian. Minhadis airs it out just a little bit unaccurate towards Max Mancia's direction. Makes it second down in 10. And it looks like Mancia wasn't even ready for the passes. His head, what in the, his head wasn't even turned when the pass was thrown. However, it's still only second down and still have a lot of time to get this score if they want to. Christian, how is it? how important is it to have pauses in between big plays? Do you want to continue that momentum or possibly risk stalling it? Or just take a little break, cool down, and get back to it? It depends how big the play is, Sebastian. If it's just a 10-yard pass, and yes, I say take a break, but if you just get a long bomb, uh, like 50-yard throw, then you definitely want to keep pushing and just trying to suppress the defense. Mancier remains as running back. High snap. Mean Hattis with time. Airs it out. Deep downfield. It is incomplete. The pass intended for Rudy Garcia. And just a little bit inaccurate. However, once again, spring football trying to get back into the groove of things. Rudy Garcia, however, the man the pass was intended for, he's an incoming senior. He spent most of his time on the junior varsity seasoning. Now he comes to varsity. How does he have to be feeling? You know, I'm sure he's a bit frightened, but I'm sure it's not. he's not going to let it get to him. As you know, he earned his, ro his spot, roster spot on the varsity team. And he's just trying to make the most out of it. He had 16 yards for varsity last year. Airs it out. Mancia right there deep downfield. Down the 30 to the 20. Not quite. Past the 25, however. And a big movement of the chains. Somebody show Charlie Clark on the big screen. And Mancia with another big receiving play. We saw a lot of that in the playoff game versus San Angelo. He came up big time with about three receiving touchdowns, I want to say. I'm sure they're going to try to implement him as much as they can in this upcoming season. We've been seeing a lot of Max Mancia as a receiver, Christian. And with the voids being left behind by Curtis Munillo, obviously, who had a phenomenal season. But the void being left in by him, how do these players that are coming up to varsity, how is their emotions knowing that they have to replace such a player that gave so much to Eastwood that wasn't only cupcakes but records? You know, I wouldn't say replace Sebastian. I would say just fill in. You know, they're trying to make the most out of it. Yes, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be very hard to fill in his shoes. However, I'm sure the troopers, everybody at that, not just blue or gold, but everybody is going to try to do the most to their advantage to help their team and help their success be great this year. I mean, Harris and the gold have to move back makes it first and 15. Spotted at the 27, handed off Mancia. Big gap, big hole down the 20, the 10. He's gone. Somebody say gold to touchdown. Touchdown, goal team, number 20. Christian, do you recognize that? Because they're sounding off the cowbells. You know, it's a very familiar sign, and I'm glad I get to hear it again, Sebastian. The gold goes up 18 to 7. They'll stay on the field as they'll decide to go for two. They're 0-2 so far with two-point conversions. Let's see if they can gain those two points back with this one.
They'll bring in Jaden Martinez as the back. One out to the right, that's Garcia, two to the left. Mean Hattis takes it. He's got time, but here comes pressure. Having to get out of it. Is he going to roll out? Being sacked. Being strip sacked. And the Blues got it. Blue you know, defense, after letting out the touchdown, did not let out the two point conversions. A great tackle by Conrad Joseph Garcia. I'm sure it would have been great for the Blue team to try to pick and get the scooping score and run it all the way back. However, they weren't able to do that. But at the same time, they still stopped the Trooper goal team from getting a two-point conversion. And now they made them 0-3 for two-point conversions. I'm sure that's something that the coaches are definitely going to talk about with their team the next practices. So the gold takes an 11-point lead. Still, as you mentioned, Christian, no two-point conversions have been fulfilled. Now we'll get the chance to see the blue offense take the field once again and try to respond to that. You're down by 11 points. However, you still have a ton of time, not only in the second quarter, but as the game as a whole. How do you take it, Christian? Do you try to write out the clock until the end of the half, or do you want to score quick even though we're still early on in the game? I say just stay calm. You don't want to rush anything. You already have the lead up. But, however, the blue team, they need to try to take control as best as they can. Try to get some more runs in with number 34, Nathaniel Chavira. Try to get the most out of that and just get their momentum and their energy and their spirits lifted. If you're a coach, what are you telling your blue team down by two scores? Stay calm, you know, that's the best you could do in this moment. You don't want to do anything that you regret in the game and you don't want to make any mistakes. It feels like football season at its peak, Christian. Looking down upon the bleachers, it almost looks completely full. The student section standing at every opportunity that they have. Obviously, one of the traditions here is never sit down during a game, Christian. And I know you experienced that as a sophomore. How hard was it? You know, it wasn't too bad, Sebastian, because you're always moving around. You're yelling, you're screaming, you're cheering for the team that you love, the team that you support as you are El Paso's finest. And, you know, it's just very fun to be in that crowd in that environment. Ethan Camacho comes back in the game. They're going to hand it off. Not able to gain much. Maybe just a little bit. At most lucky he got one. Worst case scenario is he lost one. Referees will signal that he lost it. Sets up second and 11. And a bit of heated, uh, heated temperatures is number 53. Jaden Quintana was getting into it with the trooper on the goal team. A little bit of friendly banner. We don't know. We can't hear from here. But it would be interesting to hear that cuts a quarter, cuts an edge down to the 40, and rolling out of bounds, but not before getting the first down. A big play for the goal team by Jaden James, the blue team, able to get the first down. Or at least not quite. It looked like he cut the edge. Maybe got the first down, but they'll rule him just short. Make it third down and one. So close, Christian. Yet so far. Gold moves. No call. Flag flies. Free play, maybe, but he throws it out of bounds. We'll check the penalty. Could possibly be a deciding factor of how the blue wants to play it. It'll go on the gold team. The blue will have a new set of downs. And they'll be set right at the 39-yard line. Camacho takes it. Looking. He's got ice to go deep. Does he have it? Great catch. Does he really? What's the rule? What's the rule? The rule is it's caught. The rule is it's caught by Jaden James. Outstanding catch towards the outside of the field. And already making a name for himself as he has come up multiple big plays for the Trooper Blue team. And he's showing the coaches what he's capable of, even just on the JV team. That's the type of play, Christian, to absolutely turn momentum. 
making the complete try for the grab, hugging his body all the way downfield. Lose the ball, Camacho loses it. The goal has got it right back. Camacho lost it, the goal jumped on it. That was Raul Vela. And just like that, the momentum changes in the snap of a finger. The goal team is going to take over and see what they could do now, try to boost up their score even more. Christian, I just blinked and the ball just changed possession. If you think about it, we're also due for a warm-up, so we're really glad this is happening right now. Number one rule, do not close your eyes during a football game. <laughs> You're right, Sebastian. 18 to 7, goal gets it right back, Darian Diaz. Hands it off, Jaden Martinez, and he's met heavily by Gabriel Vasquez. We'll make it second down and long. They'll stand at the 39-yard line. Second and seven. Two to the right, two to the left. Hand off Martinez, then fakes it. Martinez almost looked like he got strip sacked, but able to keep possession of the ball. And while the run doesn't go for that many yards, Christian, he was able to keep possession, and they were tugging at him. You know, you're right, Sebastian. He was able to stay on his feet to the best of his ability, try to push through. It didn't work too much in his favor. However, they're only about five yards away to getting the first down. Third and four. Ball on the 43. I could hear Mr. McCage, Coach McCage yelling from all the way up here. Not too happy with this O-line. Coach McCage can seem like a scary person, Christian. But one time, he spoke to me, and not that he was coming in to yell, but he's actually one of the nicest people you'll meet here. He really is, Sebastian. I had my freshman year for World Geography, and he was one of the nicest teachers I've ever had. Coach McCage also teaches government and AP government, which means he doesn't only go through stress when he's watching his athletes, he's also going through stress when he's watching his students in his classroom. However, luckily that stress has decreased as AP testing season is finally over. Flag flies on the field, we'll check the call. And I, I'm hearing some distant boos, Christian. I'm guessing Eastwood is also a little bit biased on who they want to win, cheering for some friends, but that's what it's all about. A healthy, competitive spirit. Again, emphasis on healthy. It'll move the gold up inside blue territory. Darian Diaz movement at the line. Checking in for another flag. Reps won't give in to them. They've been heavily lenient. Darian Diaz calling. Oh, and they call that one right away. The question is, Christian, what did you see? Full start or offsides? You know, I saw offsides. However, I couldn't. Be, I, it's kind of hard to tell from up here sometimes. I'm sure the referees have a better vantage point. We'll we know see the that, call right now. We know that whatever is called, it was very close, and neither team's going to be fulfilled happy. It looks like it's going to go on the blue team. Which, which will move the goal right back up. Darian Diaz is looking to get a touchdown because not only will it mean that he'll be able to up the stat pad and maybe include some highlights on his social media, but he also takes AP English 3. And they're Christian, they have a little bit of a tradition, having a cereal party once in a while, where they eat cereal during class time and they learn, or maybe have some fun. So. Darian Diaz himself, if he gets scored a touchdown, maybe that'll work a little bit of leeway into having another cereal party near the end of the year. We'll see what happens. Darian Diaz takes the snap. In the backfield, moving right back up, making it past midfield, past the 40. Darian Diaz can run as well, going so close to the red zone. And just like that, the goal team is already about in scoring position, trying to boost their lead even more, get their momentum going some more. Last year, Darian Diaz ended with 53 rush yards, 193 passing yards, and three total touchdowns.
Diaz, low snap, loses control of it, but he's able to pick it back up. Rolling now, he's gonna roll out again. No, pass is complete. Fabian Penalosa able to show off that he's got the moves and the skill to be able to stay in bounds. And Christian, I'm pretty sure he got both feet in. You know, he definitely read Sebastian. He definitely did. And already we keep on seeing low snaps from the goal team center. You wonder if Coach McCage is going to go over that a bit more with him. Christian, what is the worst PE exercise that you've ever had to do? The one that took the most out of you last time i had peace sebastian i was in my freshman year so i can't really remember well christian at least for me i would have to say probably something along the lines of burpees and i mention this because we're secretly giving the coaches ideas to maybe make them do thousands of burpees if they make more mistakes who knows we're not trying to be stitches though Second and ten. Jaden Martinez to the right of Darian Diaz. Three to the right, one to the left. Fabian Banalosa, he's coming off junior varsity Christian, but he looks more than ready for varsity, especially after that spectacular catch. Screenplay goes nowhere for the gold. Just under six minutes left in the second quarter. As Mr. Majano, who's, do, who's doing the PAs, just said, there's two number ones on the roster, and there's no distinguishing them, so we share the credit between Mikey Torres and Joshua Mora over that reception until someone raises their hand and says, hey, that's me, by the way. Third and 12 for the goal. Darian Diaz takes a snap, looking, throwing into the end zone! Just stopped, but it looked like it was going to be able to squeeze the position, but just not quite. And just like that, fourth down for the Troopers after a big play by Darian Diaz to get them about into scoring position. You wonder if they go for it or they'll just kick a field goal. The and pass... The pass was intended for Aiden Manhart, and maybe we'll see Diego Rivera, but it doesn't look like it. Making the move inside. Gold will go off. Diego Rivera will come in. See, it's a situations like this. Do you take the field goal and boost the goal team more, or do you try to give the blue team a chance? Well, Christian, as I said, if I were doing this personally, I would just see who's willing to buy me lunch. That's a good point, Sebastian. But at the same time, for Diego Rivera, it's a win-win no matter what. The thing about Diego Rivera, though, Christian, Obviously, there has to be a replacement made at kicker. So, if we can look at this, this is also an opportunity for Diego Rivera to show how good he is under pressure situations, or maybe just practice kicking overall. As that field goal is up and good, it gives the gold more leeway. 21 to 7, they were able to gain back those three points that they lost on the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back missed two points conversion. And giving it all they got. We're a little over five minutes to go in the second quarter. Sebastian Perez Navarro alongside Christian Salazar. You're watching the Eastwood Performance and Athletics Network. As we enter 507, Diego Rivera will kick us off down to the blue team. They'll have a chance to respond, not giving up a touchdown, but at the same time still giving up points. Are you happy that you didn't give up the touchdown, Christian, or are you still a little bit upset that you still gave up a field goal? You know, I would be a little bit upset, but if my team's up by two scores, I wouldn't think too much about it. Kicks it up, up and away. It'll be a touchback for the blue team. There's a trend when it comes to the Eastwood football team, Christian, and that is there is multiple dual threat athletes and multiple sports, as we saw, with seniors who are leaving and seniors who are incoming. 
One of those being Ramon Laguana, who does track and even football. Curtis Bonillo, also in the same situation. Jason Smolden, who does basketball and even football. But Christian, do you have to question if someone possibly wants to be a swimmer on the football team? You know, they do, Sebastian. And coming up, trials for the swimming and diving team will take place July 18th and 19th. For more information, please stop by room M216 with Coach Manny. Swimming, one of the best ways to do cardio. Again, just giving ideas to the coaches if they need some. And a fumble. And a little fumble here happens. Blue team, gold team, who has possession? It'll go to the gold. Point towards the direction of the gold. A huge mistake for the gold, for the blue team, Christian. Couldn't capitalize on penalties. Let go of the ball for the second time today. The coaches, their attitude, Christian. You know, I'm sure it can be good. Both teams have already given up at least two turnovers. Coaches are definitely going to go over ball security. And they're going to try to help their players. But goal team is already about to get another score as they're just four yards away from scoring position. Goal right, team. right here, my, if I'm the goal team, I would just go straight for the end zone. You have nothing to lose. Here by two scores. The second quarter is already coming to an end. Just go for the end zone. Just try to get that score up and boost your team's morale even more. Under five minutes to play, exactly 4.59. Evan Mayne had his alongside Max Masia. Christian, let's take a moment to touch on the practice temperature, as we could say. Because, yes, it's called spring football, which spring has a nice warm feel to it. But here in El Paso, Christian, it has been hot. You're definitely right, Sebastian, as we are the Sun City, and we're definitely known for that. But how have those temperatures possibly affected the way these athletes train and prepare? As Evan Macias airs it out deep downfield, it is caught in the end zone. Somebody say gold touchdown. No, let go of it last minute. And just when you thought the trooper gold team was going to be up by more, they dropped the ball. However, that's something you can't look at too much. You can't beat yourself up over that as you are up by two scores, and it's only second down. Pass was intended for Ramon Laguana. They tried to go with the trickery from Evan Macias. And Christian, if they were willing to trick people, they sure tricked me. I thought it was a touchdown for sure. But just a little bit, pushed them out of the end zone. Wasn't counted for points. Those are things that you look to brush up on during practice. Man in motion, Max Mancia. Evan Main had a six to snap. Pass to Max Mancia, a short one, making a move. He's done this before, and he's doing it again, making a pass to the 10-yard line, pushing bodies alongside. The way he escapes body, Sebastian, is just incredible to me. His agility is absolutely through the roof, and his ability to find holes and gaps and just get through them is absolutely incredible. Max Mancia to the left of Evan Minjares. Two to the right, two to the left. Minjares takes it, looking, floating it. Macias, his direction! What is it, ruled? And it was bobbled and incomplete. So close. It seemed as though it was going to be a little bit of a talent show when it came to that juggling near reception. Again, Christian, these are things, if you want to pull off in the regular season, you use this time to clean it up a little bit. You know, you're right. They're getting their gears going, shaking off the rust. And back to Rudy Garcia. I thought there was a holding there, but no call. Evan Macias is one of the few ride receivers from varsity who had a big major role returning this year. Last year, he had 99 total yards and four total touchdowns. He looks to have a bigger role, possibly maybe ride receiver one. It's time for discussions to be had as a timeout is taken by the Eastwood Blue team. Christian, under these circumstances, you can possibly be down by seven more points, if not six. What are you telling your team if you're the Blue? If I'm the Blue, I'm just saying, do my job, you know, do what's assigned to me, listen to the coaches, listen to the people around me. 
try to read what the offense is doing and just trying to do the best of their ability. Now, for the defense who's on the blue side, they look to up their game a little bit because the outgoing seniors played a big role last year. Wide receiver and cornerback Curtis Munio had three interceptions and some spectacular pick sixes and returns. Defensive back Nate Gomez was responsible for two interceptions. And Robert Lagarda, 80 total tackles, 10 sacks, and five cost fumbles. All those guys are leaving this year, so these seniors look to up their game and play a more major role when it comes to it. Again, Sebastian, those are going to be big shoes to fill. However, I'm sure this is El Paso's finest. I'm sure these troopers are going to do a good job at filling in their shoes. And at the same time, if we're being fair, Christian, defensive tackle Noah Medina is out. And he had a really good season as a junior now going into his senior year. 29 total tackles as well as two sacks airing it out. Evan Macias is too much for him. Fourth down. And Noah Medina has had a very busy offseason we can say because he is now a school record holder holder as he set the all-time Eastwood bench press record with 340 pounds off the rack Christian if you put two of me together and stick me to a metal bar that still wouldn't be enough weight <laughs> He could bench more than my squat. <laughs> That's crazy. No, Medina's PRs are putting us out of shame. I know. Timeout taken. Discussions to be had. Four minutes, 16 seconds to go. Fourth and 10. Most likely as Christian, the gold is going to go for it. You know I would go for it. You're in scoring position, two scores again. You can't stress this enough. Coaches just want to see what you're capable of and how you handle these types of situations. Evan Minhadis remains out on the playing field. He'll stand alone in the pocket, so 99.9% .9 chance that this is going to be a pass. However, are they going to want to go with the screen, maybe a run, or will they just shoot it deep? I say go with the screen, use Max Mancia, except I don't think he's out there on the field at this time. But if I was the coaches, I would say do that. I mean, how is striking end zone? Evan, Evan is good. Somebody say gold touchdown. I mean, how does he recognize what he did the last play? And he perfected it this play as the previous play. He overthrew it when he was wide open. However, he made sure it didn't happen back to back. Good job by him. An amazing play, Evan to Evan. We're going to be seeing a whole lot of that next year. But what I can see from the corner of my eyes, Christian, is the clubs and organizations aren't taking a break. I'm not just talking about KEHS or the Eastman Performance and Athletics Network. I'm also talking about JROTC, who continues to do push-ups on the other side of the end zone. That's a little bit of a tradition. They've been doing push-ups every single time after a touchdown. And now for the two-point conversion, both Darian Diaz and Evan Meenhut is out there. And, and that's our own PJ Patrick Chavez taking the snap. Oh, oh, oh and he's hit hard. Oh. <laughs> and the flag flies. And he got lit oh. up. PJ, oh we love you. And we appreciate your bravery. <laughs> that man responsible for almost everything that we do here on the Eastwood Performance and Athletics Network. I believe he got the foul, though. That was... <laughs> that was that was something you will probably once see in your life as Darian Diaz and Evan Minadis both went out as receivers just amazing that made my day it did I'm sure VJ sing stars right now though he might need to take a break and they're just gonna go for the extra point conversion with Diego Rivera don't want to risk injuries Diego Rivera's field goal is good. The gold leads 28-7. to 7. Oh my, has this been fun, Christian. It definitely has I, I do think I jinxed us in the beginning when I said this is a good competitive game. And since then, the, the Blue have, sco have scored no points. But other than that, Christian, I don't think the announcer's curse is real. I just, I just committed it, but it's not real. 
Now, one fun, one fun fact I would say, Christian, is that you mentioned earlier on that the Eastwood Troopers did go undefeated in all of their home games, and one of those trends that was set is that you and I uh, attended five of those six home games that they won. So, are we the good luck charm? You know, maybe, maybe not, Sebastian. We'll, we'll see in that this upcoming season. Hopefully the Troopers continue their streak of being undefeated at home. We will determine that next year as Eastwood will start the year against a foe that they faced last year, South Lake Carroll. They'll face them on the season opener late in August again, making the trip down to South Lake. In the past matchup, they lost 66-14. to However, the coaches have made it obvious. These are learning experience, facing one of, if not the best team in Texas. Christian, going back a second year, how do you apply the lessons that you learned to the game itself? You're going to know what you're expecting. You're going to know the environment, how to handle the pressure. And you're just going to try to make the most of it. It is a really good football program in South Lake, But the Troopers, they're going to be the underdogs. Try to get a Cinderella story in there. Here comes Eastwood Blue. Yes, they're down by 21. However, we are nowhere near the end. Max Mancilla waving towards the booth and his teacher, Miss Delgado. Student of the KEHS Film and Broadcast class, also known as Audio Visual Tech, which, by the way, if you want on your schedule, it's never too late. Ethan Camacho making the move, making the run, and it'll set down second down and around medium. On right here, about four minutes left in the second quarter. Gold or blue team trying to get another score before halftime. Christian, these are the types of crowd crowds that the underclassmen who are on junior varsity asked for having an almost packed stadium and with it how does it affect the players mindset you know it shows that you're going to have all this support on you for your upcoming games this season it's going to show that everybody's going to be rooting for you here at trooper stadium and i'm sure it'll just boost their morale make them feel a bit better about themselves The blue discussing as we are now reaching an almost complete sunset at Trooper Stadium. Sky is a warm red with second down and nine. Ethan Camacho remains at quarterback with time looking, throwing short towards the outside and it's cut making a move and spinning towards the 40 yard line and with the complete catch, Andrew Mesa. Clock stops once again, a big gain for the blue team. They'll stand at the 42 yard line. They're not running back. Nathaniel Chavira. Setting up, screen, pass, good block, missed tackle, making it towards the 50 and going out of bounds. And a great run showed by Jaden James. Didn't gain that much yardage. However, did gain solid yardage, but a flag thrown on the field will check the call. The flag was thrown a little bit late towards when he was being pushed out of bounds. Now the flag is being picked up. Still no official ruling on the field. Could it have possibly been due to an after-play altercation? You know, it could have. However, it looks like there's a lot of miscommunication on the field. And the refs are just trying to figure it all out. Check the official ruling. Blue moving back. It'll be ruled officially on the blue. So take back the good and solid play made by Jaden James and return them back to the 38 yard line. And the Trooper Band keeping the party going as the second quarter is coming to an end. Camacho takes it, screen pass once again. Can they remake magic? 
trying to fight his way back to the original position of the down. He'll get very close, make it second down and 11-ish. Jose Castellano with the reception. They'll rule him down at the 41-yard line. Second and 12. Camacho throwing deep towards the outside and it hits out of bounds. And we've been seeing a lot of that from him, just a lot of overthrown pass and missed opportunities. Pass was intended for Jaden James and will mark it third down and long. We see Daniel Alvarado to the left side of the field. He's exiting the game with a little bit of a slow limb or just a slow walk. Again, this is all about avoiding injury. So maybe you want to take him out of the game a little bit early. A loss of yardage on that play for the blue team. Gold team defense, Christian, has been holding their own. It's one thing to just score points when it comes to the varsity offense, but to be able to hold it against your counterpart teammates, it's big. And it's showing that the JV defense is here, one, to cause mayhem and destruction. You're right, Sebastian. They're showing the coaches what they're capable of and maybe trying to work for a varsity spot. They call them the monsters of McRae for a reason. Clock ticking down, officially at 2 minutes and 15 seconds. As the blue team punts on 4th and 25, we'll see the gold team and Darian Diaz lead out once again. I was asking Darian Diaz early on in the day how he felt about today, how he felt about the game, and he told me it's just a different atmosphere. It's nice to be able to share a field alongside junior varsity counterparts. It shows an opportunity for being able to teach lessons or just being able to open up their eyes. And same for the varsity athletes, being able to show them what they learned so young in their careers that yes, it is JV versus JV and varsity versus varsity, but at the end of the day, being grouped with one team it's just special, and it just grows the team into more of one main unit. Diaz takes it. Running out of time, deep down to the center of the field. It is incomplete, intended for Fabian Penalosa. And a most perfect accuracy by Darren Diaz. That was a tough tough throw for him but he was able to get there unfortunately for him the receiver was not able to bring it in but the accuracy was definitely on point there Sebastian very close to threading the needle two minutes with three seconds to go Jaden Martinez in as the back two to the right two to the left they're gonna hand it off right up the gut he'll gain solid yardage count it four they'll be down at the 39 make it third and six under two minutes big third down coming up for the gold and the band is showing it darian diaz setting a man in motion that's oh, Aiden Manhart. Here comes the pressure. Darian Diaz is not going to go down. Darian Diaz stays on his feet. And an amazing attempt by Darian Diaz to make it fourth down and short. It looks like he was gone dead to the right, Christian. You're right, Sebastian. And you know, another low snap from the gold team O-line. Coach McCage, I'm sure, is going to have them doing a lot of snaps in practice. As Darian Diaz was able to escape that Christian, it took me back to my 10-year-old self when I was watching Philadelphia versus the Washington football team. And, well, Carson Wentz was that quarterback. I thought that Ryan Kerrigan had him in the pocket, but Carson Wentz was able to escape the exact same way Darian Diaz was able to escape that play, but not oh, able no. to escape that play, that sack, that tackle, as the blue team takes command. They take control of the ball. A big-time turnover for the blue Christian. Darian Diaz is a bit slow to get up. He is on the keeper, the tackle made by 59, Victor Arajo. Victor Arajo made the recovery. And Nani, Darian Diaz goes down, hopefully he's okay. Not a good signal for Darian Diaz. However, he is able to walk on his own. Helped off the field by number 52, 
Carl Fuller making sure his QB's okay. Darian Diaz, knowing his competitive spirit, Christian, even though he might be a little bit hurt, I wouldn't doubt that he wants to get back into this game anytime soon. I'm sure you're right, Sebastian, as he has a deep passion for football and he just loves to be out there on the field. Under a minute to play, 28-7. to seven. The Blue has a real opportunity. They look to take advantage of it under a minute to go. This is what you practice in practice, Christian. Let's see if Ethan Camacho has what it takes. In front of an electric crowd. Nathaniel Chavira in as running back. Some miscommunication on the field from referees again. And you know, not only is this a warm up for the players and the coaches, but it's also for the referees, Sebastian, as they're getting back into the use of having to announce the, or not announce, but having to make tough decisions. Those tough decisions, Christian, after seeing multiple interviews, they're not calls that refs like to make, and they know that either team will have something out for them as that pass is almost cut but just off Jose Castellano had it in his hands but a little bit too far it was placed by Camacho and it makes it second down and 10 but it could have been a great reception but again just something that you clean up in practice is Christian and just under one minute in the second quarter blue team trying to get only their second score of the game trying to close the gap a bit Camacho takes the snap, well placed, looking, firing, deep down field, it is off to the track. Third and 10, 42 seconds to go. You know, it's a thing Ethan Camacho is going to have to work on on practice is his ball placement and his ability to get the ball to his receivers. 28 to 7. Camacho looking, firing now to the other side of the field. Is that ball too shortly placed? Intended for Matthew Yarbrough. He's had success. Matthew Yarbrough caught the touchdown near the beginning of the game. That gave the Blue the lead 7-6. to six, And the Gold have just been on fire after that. Scoring 22 unanswered. Camacho takes the snap, looking, going short. The pass is picked. The pass is picked. The gold is off. The gold is off to the 40-yard line. An interception made by Eastwood Gold. Angel Perez came up big time. You know, and he read that play perfectly, and he was able to get the interception. Maybe the trooper gold team is going to be able to get another scoring before halftime comes. Wow. Turn the tables, Christian. The Blue looked like they had a golden opportunity to score with under a minute to go in the first half. Instead, turnover and a crucial turnover at that negatively for the Blue, positively for the Gold. And you know who's on the Gold coaching staff, Christian? None other than our own Eric Bernal. Also, your second period teacher. So if the Gold pull it off, Christian, and he's in good spirits tomorrow, how will class be like on Friday? I hope very energetic and happy. I mean, had us taking the snap, screen pass to Macias. Macias pushing bodies along, and that was his own O-lineman. But now it's looking as though the ball came out. Blue is signaling it's theirs. Do we have another back-to-back -back turnover? We'll check it. We'll see it. What do they rule? Gold is saying it's there. That's P.J. Patrick Chavez. Good to see that he's back on his feet. And they're, is, they're indicating blue ball. Blue has it. Two back-to-back -back turnovers. It was a great play by Evan Macias, however, couldn't maintain possession 
a little bit of frustration as his helmet goes to the ground. The blue team has it, 18 seconds to go. Christian, what do you do in this situation? You know, you definitely have to go for the deep ball. However, instead of going to the sidelines, I say they go right up the middle of the field as the sideline throws for Ethan Camacho. He's not been doing very good on the sideline throws, but maybe if it's in more of the open field, he'll be able to get something off. Lowening up towards the outside, Christian, he didn't listen. As again, and I just said, he's been throwing a lot of those balls out, out of bounds, and he's not giving his receivers a chance to bring them in. Here's something to note. Both teams still have three timeouts. Obviously, that's more important for the Blue because they have possession. So they have the opportunity to go to the center of the field, Christian. Why do you think there's been a little bit of hesitancy to go straight down the field? I think they're just scared of an interception, but in this situation, you can't risk it. Just go to the middle of the field. Camacho fix it, hands it off. Chibarra, he's done this a load of times during his freshman year and his freshman football team, and he's able to work it around towards the out-of-bounds play. Five seconds to go, Nathaniel Chibarra gets them in better position to attempt a Hail Mary with five seconds. Again, Blue has all three timeouts. Right now, I think they should do a flea flicker, in my opinion, Sebastian. You just got a big run. I think the goal might expect that rather than a throw. Throwing it deep downfield. Matthew Yarbrough had some physical altercation, but it goes into the ground and rule it incomplete. 28 to 7, and a hectic first half that we've seen. Sebastian Perez Navarro, Christian Salazar, don't go anywhere because the second half is coming up next. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to the East with Performance and Athletics Network. The party continues. Spring ball continues. 15 minutes to go in the third quarter. Blue versus gold. The blue is down by 21 points. They hand it off up the gut. They gain some solid yardage. Sebastian Perez Navarro alongside Christian Salazar. Christian, your favorite moment of the first half. You know, if I say favorite, not <laughs> my favorite would be Evan Minhada's 90-yard run to get the gold team their first touchdown. However, funny moment, in my opinion, was Patrick Chavez on that two-point conversion. We pray that he's okay, though, because he is important here in our EPAN community. Here's the thing about PJ, Christian, PJ Patrick Chavez, is that he, yes, he had a hard hit, but then he got back up and acted like it was nothing, playing until the very end of the half as that run by Ethan Camacho goes far. Ethan Camacho able to convert for the first down. Here's something interesting, Christian. Both Evan Minhadis and Ethan Camacho are wearing 12. Uh, that's maybe a coincidence, we could say. But as we've seen, Ethan Camacho is turning on the wheels just like Evan Minhadis. Just like Evan Minhadis. Could there be a little bit of a mentorship role, especially now that Minhadis is a senior or an incoming senior at the least? There definitely could be. He's going to look up to him as a quarterback. He's going to go to him if he has a problem, if he needs help on something, if he doesn't understand it. And it's just a good to have a mentor and somebody like that to help you on your team throughout and help you on your journey throughout football. Strike right down the middle and a great pass at that completed to Andrew Mesa. A great pass found to thread the needle and found the spacing that he need. And just like that, Ethan Camacho looks really fresh to start the second half. I'm sure the blue team is going to try to try to come out and dominate this game offensively, try to do the best to their ability to regain the momentum and help their team out and maybe boost the morale of the defense too to stop the Gold's offense. Chavira pushing along, gaining four yards, showing his strength. That's what these coaches ask, especially. Yes, short runs, but when you do it like that, Christian, we're just pushing and pushing and pushing along sides. What does that show and signal to the coaches looking at you, scouting you, and possibly thinking of you as not only a junior varsity starter, but maybe a future varsity starter? It shows your toughness and your durability to be able to take these hits and keep going. As that is a big run. Chavira down the 20. Chavira is down the 10. The Ooh. 5, gaining a hard hit to the outside of the field, but not before he's able to get all the way inside of the 5 yard line and lost the ball but fortunately for him it was out of bounds before the goal team could recover and already the blue team is in scoring position within just three Moving minutes of this quarter starting they came back fresh Christian they've been utilizing the running game a lot and yes they only have one pass however that pass was right down the middle Christian you said before the end of the first half to start throwing more down the middle and that is exactly what they did with Andrew Mesa going right down the middle utilizing that field and utilizing the run game to their full potential and now it's first and goal under 12 minutes to go and they have a possibility to score a touchdown airing it out floating it yard bro is Ooh. it in and they call it incomplete incomplete pass yeah, ruled by the side judge I thought he got at least one foot down. Maybe he didn't have possession. Who knows? He has a better viewpoint than me. That one looked really close. But me, as you said, Christian, possibly he just couldn't put his body in the position where he retained inside of the end zone. But you're within the five-yard line, you know, hoping to get a score. Another pass, another deep one at that, Christian. Do you want to go to the deep corners of the end zone, or do you just want to punch it in? You have Nathaniel Chavira after all. I say just punch it in. He had that big run right now to get them into scoring position. He's a big body. He's yeah, tough to tackle. Just punch it in, run it straight up the gut. Tell your O-line, just run as fast as you can to try to block. Final question, Christian. Is this fourth down territory? It definitely is. When you're down this much and you need to come back, you need to do whatever it takes possible to get the lead back. Floating it once again, and then once again, it does not work. A pass intended for Andrew Mesa had that big pass down the middle. This one goes nowhere. Fourth down and goal. You didn't run it. Are you trying to do the same pass again? Definitely not. I don't think so. And if you are going to pass, you have to go right into the middle of the end zone. Don't try to go for a long shot. Just do a little short pass. Even a screenplay at that, but don't try to go to those end zones because it's not working out in his favor right now. Braden Janowski checked into the game. To the right.
right up to my chin. Faking Janowski is inside. Janowski, somebody say blue touchdown. And that's all they needed to do to get the touchdown. However, they wanted to throw passes. But fortunately for the blue team, they were able to finalize this drive with the score. So good for them. The blue team got it all the way inside. And Jake Janowski looking on proudly to his little brother. Back in it, the gold team will try to retake their dominant lead. Jaden Martinez dancing along to the band. He's going to be hyped up, Christian, because he's going to have a bigger position when it comes to the varsity starting roster. Twenty-eight to thirteen. They'll send Diego Rivera out to the field to kick the extra point to try to make it a fourteen-point game. is up and it is good Diego Rivera 100 for 100 Christian and now with that the trooper blue team is only down by two scores they hope to come back they got the first drive first score of the second half done in the books and now they look to continue that momentum and keep their scoring going Christian this game is all about the Eastwood football program and it's one that's not to be taken lightly because it is widely recognized across all of the West Texas region so widely recognized that when the Sun Bowl came around Pitt the University Pitt came and used Trooper Stadium as a practice facility for the Sun Bowl against UCLA and Christian it probably gave them good luck because you were at the game there do you want to tell the story you know Pitt they had their I want to say their third stringer come in and he just led them, led them to an amazing game, and they were able to take that win. So who knows, maybe the Trooper Stadium, maybe it does have a bit of a blessing for teams who play on it. They would go on to win the game 37-35 to in a thriller against UCLA. Diego Rivera set to kick it off. The Gold will have another opportunity at it, their first opportunity in the second half. Sebastian, a part of me wishes they would kind of take the return seriously. I wish they would go out and do the special teams. However, I'm sure they just don't want to risk injuries to the players in this upcoming season, especially seniors. You know, they want them to have their moment and have their time. When it comes to special teams as a unit, it could be hard to train because it has been statistically proven and scientifically proven that special teams does end up in the injuries of a lot of players. However, that doesn't mean that Eastwood is a rookie when it comes to special teams. Because I don't know if you could remember, Christian, because we started with fireworks the homecoming game. If you remember, the kick return for a touchdown against El Dorado set the mood for not just tonight, but the entire weekend. First and ten, Evan Minhadis will start off the second half. Throwing Garcia's direction, oh. bobbles it, loses it. Is it a loose ball? No whistle blown yet. Blue says they have it. No plays called dead. As the goal team recovers it, I believe, but definitely don't want to start off with that as your first play of the second half. So it looked as though the gold gained possession right back, but they had an extreme loss of yardage. Yeah. Minhadis loading up, going deep, deep downfield. Garcia's direction is incomplete. A little too far, a little too inaccurate. Christian, we talked about his size. Maybe it's just because he's got muscle on him. You know, maybe you're right, Sebastian, but... That's a play that he's been making a lot that past season. Hopefully it's just he's in a bit of a slump right now, coming back. Could it possibly also be attributed to a lack of connection, obviously? Different wide receivers coming in. Evan Main had his last year, had, had to work with Jace Molden and Curtis Murillo. This year, a little bit differently. Mean Haddis takes it with time, looking, throwing, deep downfield. Evan to Evan connects. Evan to Evan is for deep down midfield. A big first down on the play. And the flag is thrown. Might change the course and direction of the momentum gained by the gold. 
clock ticks under 8 minutes and 30 seconds from a 3rd and 21 all the way to a 1st and 10 and what would be the 42-yard line if it stands. Maybe unsportsmanlike conduct as it was after the play. We'll get the call right now. On the meantime, we touched on Jace Molden, and he has officially committed to Sewell Ross State, which means that he'll be teaming up with former Eastwood quarterback Andrew Martinez, also known as one of the biggest Eastwood quarterbacks in recent history, guiding the Eastwood Troopers to their first area state championship win in history. We'll see that connection come alive once again. Molden Martinez at Sewell Ross State, which signals that the Eastwood community grows large outside of El Paso, Texas. Jaden James playing a visit to the gold team sideline. And there was an unsportsmanlike conduct on the blue team and a personal foul on the gold team, so those penalties will offset. The gold will pick up from where they left off. The 42-yard line after the big play. Under seven minutes. Mancia in the game. This is where you have to watch Mancia's. They use him as a weapon. They use him as a fake out. I mean, Hattis trying to stay alive in the pocket, but he's going to go all the way down to the ground. Jonathan Hernandez was at the forefront of the attack sent out by the blue one. Minhadis makes it second down and long. And Minhadis' helmet will come off, which means that Darren Diaz will come in for a snap. Darren Diaz, Christian, we said it. He went down, looked like a little bit of a hurt injury, not injury per se, but a little bit of a boo boo, maybe we could call it. However, he's right back on the field. One of the coaches is probably a master of sana sana colita de rana si no sana hoy sana mañana. Handed off Max Mancia. Breaks and slips a tackle past the 40. Trying to make his way all the way to the 35. Down to the 30 but not quite. And I just don't know how he does it, Sebastian. The way he escapes tackles. He might be lacing himself up with Vaseline or butter. Who knows? Because he's just slippery and nobody can seem to tackle him at all. Now, if this were baseball, Christian, with Vaseline, that would be a little bit of a different story. But Max Mancia has been insane. And we saw it last year. We're seeing it this year. He's living up to the nickname of Mad Max. As it is coming near five minutes in the third quarter. I mean, Hades back in the game. Fires and connects. Fabian Penalosa. He had a big start in the first half, then stayed a little bit quiet. See if he could get more involved so far. That pass perception made by Rudy Garcia. Three out to the right, one to the left. Jaden Martinez enters the game. We're now seeing a little bit of a running back mix when it comes to quarterbacks. I mean, had is stepping, slowing all the way deep downfield. Rudy Garcia could not dive down deep, but a little bit of another overthrow, Christian. You know, and it's a trouble and a struggle for both teams as Minhadas and Camacho have just been overthrowing a lot of these passes that should be easy receptions. Is that, part, is that part of the rust, Christian? You take time off, obviously. You're not focused on the game as much. You practice for a month, but is it still a little bit part of that rust that still needs cleaning? It definitely might be. You're not used to this environment. You have to get back into the groove of things. Hand it off right up the gut. Martinez finds a hole. Martinez past the 20 and slides right into the end zone, right into the red zone. Jaden Martinez remains. Evan Minhadis.
Garcia out far left. Looking, he's going to run with it. They're not going to let him go anywhere. Tugging him down to the ground. I mean, had this once again a rough hit. The varsity defense isn't taking any pity on their quarterback. They're definitely not Sebastian as they don't want to let him escape because they know how, how important he is on his run game. Second down and 12. This quarter's gone rather quickly, Christian, especially after a very slow second quarter where we saw a lot of turnovers and a lot of events. This has been dominated almost completely by the gold offense after letting the blue defense score. Airing it out, Evan Mancias in the end zone! Touchdown, blue and gold! Gold comes up with the touchdown! And there's a bit of bowling going on in the end zone and a flag maybe unsportsmanlike conduct maybe a celebration that the refs did not particularly agree with however gold found the blue in the end zone covered by blue and gold gold leads 34 to 14 Diego Rivera's kick is up and it is good. Gold takes a commanding lead, 35 to 14 over the blue. And the band as one of the traditions still playing throughout the entire game. As they hardly take any breaks. They're not letting out Christian and neither should we. And neither is the cheerleading squad or the trooper student section. The student section will also be I think so. the student section will also be seeing a little bit of a change in the following year with the graduation of Spirit Director Manny Baeza. So we'll be seeing a lot of the things around this change, Christian. But the most is that all of us, the class of 2024, are going to have seniority. And as I say that, it slowly comes over me that next year we're seniors. It's crazy to think about it, Sebastian. Joseph Cox at quarterback for the Eastwood Junior Varsity Offense, the blue team. Low snap, looking, stream pass, and a little bit of miscommunication. Could not connect with Adrian Garcia. They had a little opening, maybe could have gone for something big. Instead, they have to hold the back. There's definitely been a lot of struggles throwing the ball on both sides of the team. However, the goal's making the most out of their plays as they're up by three scores. Joseph Cox takes the snap. Here comes pressure. Can he escape it? No, he cannot. We're seeing a trend, and that is the defenses do not care for the absolute safety of their quarterback. They're willing to put him down. And just like that, it is fourth and long. It is fourth and very long for the blue team. You're down by a large margin. Do you want to see if you're the coaches, if your players have enough to convert this type of situation, or do you call on Diego Rivera? I just call on Diego Rivera because you're down by this much and with the position you're in, I'd say if they were maybe at the 40 or the 35 even, then you could go for it. But based on the field position, I'd say just kick it, trust your defense. Here comes the gold team. A phenomenal touchdown. The connection from Evan to Evan. 12 plus 11. Put him up 35 to 14. Both of these quarterbacks, Evan Minhattis, is the starting one there. Andy as the backup. Both are with the 7-on-7 seven seven state football team. Christian, who recently qualified for the Texas 7-on-7 seven seven football state tournament. The tournament is set to take place June 22nd through the 24th at College Station.
handing it off. Jaden Martinez pushing bodies along and goes for solid yardage of around three. It'll set, it'll set up second down and seven. Darian Diaz, here came the pressure, fires down, and it's caught! It's caught past the 20, the 10, fighting for more oh, oh. the ball, but jumps right back on it! Fabian Benalosa in a play that just gave some people a possible panic attack because of just how much happened. Large pass by Darian Diaz, connects, loses it, then jumps right back on it. The play's offset, now the gold is in almost near red zone territory. That was an incredible throw by Darian Diaz and an even better catch by Fabian Penalosa to bring in the ball and drive this and push the ball down further. Big time play that sets the goal down at the 13 yard line. As now we're entering the fourth quarter, fourth and final quarter of play where the blue team will try to come back. However, their defense and their offense is not its not looking too good for them, Sebastian, to say the least. We enter the fourth quarter. Sebastian Pesnavarro, Christian Salazar. The third quarter went by rather quick. What stood out to you the most? Stood out to me the most is the blue team coming out and scoring in the snap of a finger. But then again, the gold, again, they just pushed back. They, they really took their time running the ball and doing smart plays. And they were able to run down the clock a lot and make the third quarter come to an end very shortly. And they were able to get a score. And now they already have the ball again and they're about to score another. Last year, during spring football, we had a little bit of a different situation when it came to time management. The first and second quarters were 12 and 10 respectively. And in for the third and fourth were what I remember to be eight minutes. So as we went further on to the game, the quarters decreased is the main idea. However, this time, 15, 15, 15, 15. Coach Lopez is asking these athletes to play a full-on football game, which is the expectation. They're going at it full strength, full eyes ahead. Thirty-five to fourteen. Darian Diaz, low snap, looking, throwing, cannot connect. Pass intended for Fabian Penalosa. Pass complete. It's for Fabian Penalosa. Check it out. And no line, and the center is definitely going to need to work on his snaps. As again, another low snap to Darian Diaz, and it just risks injury happening. Darian Diaz got up rather awkwardly. However, still goes back to the center and able to play another down. Low snap once again, Darian Diaz going to take it right up the middle. Darian Diaz can get close past the 10, but that's around it. And I think the goal team, they're just going to try to run the clock out, get this Darian game Diaz over with. As they're up by three scores, I'm sure they're tired. They have school tomorrow. We have school tomorrow. Even though it's only one week left or more like three and a half days. One week left. You're right, Christian. Which, by the way, we have Monday off. Memorial Day. I keep forgetting about that, but I'm so happy it's happening. Darian Diaz takes the snap, looking, throwing to the corner of the end zone. Can it connect? No, it cannot. Brings up fourth and six. Gold leads 35 to 14. That's a minute for Fabian Penalosa. You can fourth down. So many events that are coming to an end, Christian. Not only spring football, which ends after today. However, also other extracurricular activities, such as orchestra concerts. Which, by the way, if you attended one and saw a sick Iron Maiden t-shirt, that was Christian Salazar rocking the cello. And if you saw a sick Led Zeppelin shirt in the, the basic section, that was Sebastian. Christian, you want to hear the truth? I bought that at Target two days ago. I just stole mine from my dad's, to be honest. 
Fake handoff. Throwing corner. The end zone. Is it connected and caught? Yes, it is. Somebody say gold touchdown. To number seven, Jaden Martinez. Incredible grab. And push the score up for the Eastwood goal team even further higher. And an incredible play at that. D Darian Diaz was smothered on the play. Forty-one to fourteen. The gold leads with 12 minutes and 35 seconds in the fourth quarter. They'll go for two. They have been unsuccessful in every single attempt that they have tried in. Martinez in motion. Darian Diaz rolling out, throwing, and off the hands. Right in his hands. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to grab it in. That was a perfect throw by Darian Diaz, though. Could not have been any better. Just slightly off, Christian. You hate to see it. The gold goes 0 for 4 in two-point conversions. However, they are leading 41 to 14, a huge margin. And by the way, it's looking like the gold is going to go 2 a 0 when it comes to spring football over the past two years. Christian, you're the blue right now. Young players on your side, you're down by a big deficit. What is your main goal or main task to accomplish right now, this drive alone? Just throw deep, try to get something going for your team. If not, get some big run plays. We've saw a lot from number 34, Nathaniel Chavada. He's been doing his job so far, but unfortunately for him, the rest of his team, they haven't been living up to his standards right now. As there's a flag on the play, Maybe face mask, I couldn't really see from here. Both teams have had their experiences with errors. Whether the errors have been penalties or whether the errors have been turnovers, Christian, is that something that the coaches are going to want to hone down on the most? And is that the main takeaway from this game for the coaches? Will penalties and turnovers be the main thing that the coaches take away from the game tonight? They definitely will. At the beginning, we saw the goal team give up two interceptions on two plays that they easily could have scored on. But they were able to bounce back off of it very easily. They weren't, they weren't letting it bother them throughout the rest of the game. And as you see on the score, they've definitely been doing an amazing job. Camacho firing. That one caught by Andrew Mesa near the outside of the field. Stops the clock. Mark it. Second down and short. They've tried and they've tried with the outside passes, Christian. They haven't been able to get them. Is that a reason why they keep trying unsuccessful plays? Maybe to just perfect them when the season comes around. Yeah, they just need to get something going. They need to get used to this environment, the, the adrenaline that you have while you're playing. You know, you haven't been in this situation in over six months, more or less. And you're just trying to get back into your groove, get used to the way things were when you were playing football every every week. And it's it's a tough ex expectation, Christian, because the Eastwood Trooper football program is just very qualified and very tough to get into and have a big-time position because Eastwood has done so much, even filled some spots on the TSWA 6A All-State football team as they had Robert Lagarda, third team, All-State defensive end, as that pass aired out deep downfield, it's caught, the blue is inside, somebody say Eastwood blue, touchdown JJ, Jaden James definitely making a name for himself on this JV offense he's balling out showing the coaches, hey I deserve a spot on this varsity team, let me play as the JV, they've been going to him a lot in a lot of tough situations. Big time play for the JV offense. Yes, they're down by 21. However, those plays still stand out to the coaches for good reason, especially if you're the player. Christian, somebody get that man a cupcake. <laughs> The blue looks like they'll go for two. They've been sticking to Diego Rivera, but now they look to cut this deficit at least by 19. 
takes the snap, airing it out, floating into the corner. Once again, Jaden James flag flies. Almost 100% uh, holding or pass interference. We'll check the official call. However, going back to the expectation of the program, Robert Lagarda was third team All-State defensive end. Evan Minhadis earned an honorable mention as an All-State quarterback, and Curtis Murillo earned an honorable mention in both his positions, receiver and defensive back. Alongside that, we can add the numerous players who have committed or are offered from numerous colleges. Those who come to mind, defensive back Jacob Barron, who's committed to Wisconsin Lutheran College. Kicker Jesus Garcia, who we mentioned earlier, is committed to the Lakeland Muskies. Alongside him, Nathan Lopez and also Orient Caro will go to the Lakeland Muskies as that two-point conversion is inside the end zone and good. Able to cut down the deficit to 19 is the Eastwood Blue Team, 41-22. to 22. Two now, there's also teammates with multiple offers. Let's talk about Robert Lagarda for a second. He has offers from New Mexico Highlands University, McPherson College, Oklahoma State Panhandle Football, and Sewell Ross State. And let's not forget, Christian, he also played the halftime shows with the band during the normal regular season games, and he did not let out his stamina one bit. The gold comes back as they do. Sebastian Pérez Navarro alongside Christian Salazar. You're watching the Eastwood Performance and Athletics Network. Evan Mina had his returns as quarterback for the gold. Well, Christian, now I take back what I said earlier about Deja Vu. This is a little bit of Deja Vu from last season's Blue vs. Gold game. Watch but what we, what we saw is that the defense of the varsity was absolutely dominant. As Evan Minhadis is turning around the corner. Evan Minhadis trying to find an open gap, but he's losing yardage. Maybe he's a little Deshaun Jackson tactory. He's still going. He's still flying. He's still spinning. Evan Minhadis is finally down. And flags fly all over the place. And there's someone down on the field. Can't quite make out the number, but you hate to see it. He's from the blue side. Part of the varsity defense. Having a little bit of a hard time being able to get up. If we can look at it at a positive aspect though, Christian, many of these injuries could possibly just be situations like cramps, where it's just attributed to the fact that many athletes are just not in that same rhythm during football season, which is why the games even happen in the first place. You're definitely hoping for that as he gets up off the field, he's able to get up on his own. It's always good to see when the player can get up on their own without having to be assisted as we hope he's okay. We still have no ruling on the flag. Definitely a lot of trickery, trickery in that play, though. We saw the lateral to Max Mancia and then throw it to Evan Minhadis, the quarterback, trying to get something going. Christian, have you ever been on those spinning cups at Western Playland? I have, Sebastian. You know how you always come out super dizzy in the end because it feels like there's a million things going on? Yes. That's how that play felt like. Evan Minhattis was just spinning all around the place. I wonder how he's feeling right now. I do too, Sebastian. He was able to avoid a lot of tackles, which I don't know how he did it. But unfortunately for them, he did get tackled and they did get the penalty called on them. Possibly holding or blocking the back. Darian Diaz comes on. Loss of yardage on the play. Darian Diaz with the snap. Handing it off. Jaden Martinez cuts the corner, cuts the edge. Still alive, spinning, pulling a little bit of Evan Minhadis of his own. And a fumble, I believe. And now another turnover. Blue it ball. Go it goes to the blue. And this could just be the momentum shifter that they needed. That has been a concurrent and a huge issue. And the blue now, they're down 19. 
three possessions. However, with almost nine minutes to play, there is a absolute real opportunity that they can storm back from this deficit. You're right, Sebastian. And as we saw, the blue team was getting excited. However, the gold team, they're pointing to the scoreboard saying, hey, we're up right now. Hey, Christian, anything is possible. Did you watch Powder Puff? I did. Yeah, the way, the way that that ended, the juniors were dominating, but then the seniors came back, and, well, the end is up to interpretation, we could say. I think it was rigged. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very controversial ending. Very controversial ending. The official score was 18-18. to 18. Seniors claimed victory. So that's just, that's just left up the public opinion. Almost bobbled snap flag on the play. We'll see what the flag was. Not that much yardage for junior varsity. However, they do find themselves in the red zone at the 19-yard line. Definitely not a number you see a lot. Take the snap as it was number 80, Christian Lopez. It looks as though it's going to go on the blue, however, because they're moving back. So... Again, Christian, an ongoing theme. Blue has had so many opportunities off of turn turnovers. They haven't been able to capitalize. You're right, Sebastian. And just they haven't been able to do anything with the turnovers they got. And we saw the two in the first quarter. I believe they were only able to score off one of them. And unfortunately, it, this game is not going in their way at all. As it's just nearing the seventh minute. 41 to 22. Christian Lopez with the throw. Firing deep down. And intercepted. Feet. It's intercepted by the gold back-to-back -back turnovers. And just like that, gold gains possession again. And there's a flag on the play. Two flags fly after it. Wow. If, if you're just a viewer who doesn't know that it's a spring football game, you would think that this is a rivalry like Dallas and Philadelphia. You know, you're right, Sebastian. You're playing against your own guys. These are your family. And you're going to try to get under the skin a bit, let's be honest, because you're close with them, you know how they are, you know how competitive they are, and you just want to do everything to win, get under the skin, but at the end of the day, it's all love and it's all family here. It's brothers versus brothers, Christian, and obviously, if you know a thing or two about having siblings, they can be annoying sometimes. I do. I have a sibling of my own. So the Eastwood Gold and Darian Diaz will have a new set of downs. The Blue not able to capitalize and running out of time to storm a comeback. Now, Christian, here's something that's different from other football games is that in spring ball, Coach Lopez is standing near the outskirts of the football field. For that, how do these players, junior varsity, who may not get to work with him as much as varsity, how do they have to be feeling that the head coach, the boss of all the operations within football, is watching every single play that they're doing and every single word that they're saying? I'm sure they're a bit intimidated by his presence, which, I mean, sometimes a lot of players, they can be when the head coach is watching you and you're trying to make a name for yourself on this team and get a spot. But at the end of the day, he's just here to help you and push you to be the greatest that you can be. And another flag on the play. Gold already backed up deep, and they'll look like they'll go down even more. We have to see the official call, but the reactions tell us that it's most likely going to go on gold. Yes, it is false start. Take them from the nine and move them back five. And the, the clock will keep running. The lyrics to the song we're hearing, Christian, jump up, jump up, and get down. Well, the gold is getting down, down five yards. They are Sebastian. And the clock is still running, probably to get us all home as we all have school tomorrow. Darren Diaz hands it off, spin move. Jaden Martinez, Martinez making another one. Down, fighting his way towards the 10, spinning out of bounds. With 4 minutes and 12 seconds to go, the gold lead dominantly by 19. 
but the blue is not going to be letting out anytime soon until that clock hits zero, zero. Something fundamental that you come to learn, you play with everything you have until the final second. And the goal team looking to just run the ball, run the clock out, get us all home as they're dominating this game in a 41-22 lead. There in the S fires. That one's caught incomplete. Close right. to the 20, but being tugged all the way back. Mark him at the 17 to be exact. And another flag on the play. Christian, I can tell you a personal anecdote from my dad's days of playing football. As whenever they would not only lose or just commit a bunch of penalties, their coach would make them run and make them run until they felt like throwing up. Now, hopefully the coaches at Eastwood won't take it that far, but will we see some repercussion or will the players see some repercussion for the amount of penalties that there have been during the game? I think they might, you know, even though it is just a spring game and it's a scrimmage, you're just trying to get back into the groove of things, you still have to be prepared and be ready for when the football season comes around. Under three minutes to go, third and one, Darian Diaz at the helm. Low snap, handoff, Jaden Martinez fighting for yardage, and the blue defense doesn't let him go anywhere. Rule it, fourth down and one, no yardage gained. And the goal team just trying to hurry up as it is fourth and one, trying to get this conversion, keep their drive alive. Low snap, Diaz is going to take it. Diaz is rolling out, spinning and gets the first down. That's enough. Under two minutes officially to play and the gold are looking more and more likely towards a victory. Darian Diaz started this game, and it looks as though it's going to be more likely that he is going to be the one to finish off the game. Obviously, with the early flea flicker to Evan Minhat is now stumbling on his feet, and he cannot maintain control. Gonna go down. The band, the cheerleaders, the student section has been keeping it alive, Christian. But what are all these people going to go do once they get home, Christian? I think they're all going to get home and sleep. It's a school night. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember that it's Thursday. Diaz takes the snap, looking, firing, downfield, the pass is picked! The pass is picked by the blue, going down, going Ooh. down to the 20, going down to the 10, breaks someone's ankles, he is gone! Pick six, the blue score, but flags on the field. So far though, touchdown for Andres Blanco. And I definitely think that ball is going to come back as there was a big block by number 90, Raul Vela. I believe they're going to call it legal blocking or blindside block. Okay, it was definitely a big block. So, possibly take away the points with 26 seconds to go. Clock continues to run. We'll see the call of action. However, he's showing up for his teammate. I believe they're just going to call the game as there's only 8 seconds left. The clock is still running. Clock is sticking down. The points will not happen, but the blue is still fired up no matter what. It'll be an unofficial pick six, we can say, for Andres Blanco. And there rules the buzzer. And spring ball has come to an end. The gold come out victorious. 41 to 22. Christian, final thoughts and wrap up. You know, they both came out playing hard, playing aggressive. We saw the gold team get off to a bit of a slow start with the two interceptions. However, they bounced back very quickly, very easily. And it all started with that one run by Evan Minhadas, about a 90-yard run to just set the tempo of this game and keep their momentum and their energy alive. Thank you so much for joining us on the Eastwood Performance Athletics Network. A huge thank you goes to our executive producers, Eric Bernal, who goes home a happy man tonight, and Stephanie Delgado Rangel. Thank you to our producers, Hector Mas and Carlos Sosa. Thank you to our cameraman, Adrian Dominguez, and Christian Salazar, Sebastian Pernodaro. We'll see you later in September. We're over and out.